wait, wait, don't tell me. From NPR. Oh. Sankata, the program director at WNYC. To me, listener support means you're a partner with us. The news, the information, the types of conversations you hear on WNYC, without your contribution, it doesn't happen. And you know, I like it that way. We are beholden to you. That's what keeps WNYC strong. Show your support. Go to WNYC.org and click on donate. Children of a Lesser God, returning to Broadway in a new production that asks us to stop assuming, stop judging, and start listening. Now in previews, tickets at Children of a Lesser God on Broadway.com. WNYC is a media partner of the 2018 Tribeca Film Festival. Tribeca celebrates the voices of women with opening night premiere Love Gilda, the story of Gilda Rodner, and closing night The Fourth Estate, both from first-time female directors. TribecaFilm.com. Stay with us. You're listening to Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me here on WNYC. Should be mostly cloudy through the day today. High near 50 this afternoon. Mostly cloudy tonight. Low 33 degrees with wind chills between 25 and 30. Right now, though, it's 43 cloudy right now in Central Park at 1120. Support for NPR comes from NPR stations and lumber liquidators supporting rebuilding efforts in Aransas County, Texas, which was affected by Hurricane Harvey. Providing material support and money to help rebuild public schools in the county. More at lumberliquidators.com. Visit St. Petersburg Clearwater, home of 35 miles of white sand beaches along Florida's Gulf Coast, and a daily at celebration on Clearwater Beach, 90 minutes west of Orlando, at visitstpetclearwater.com. Owned, operated, and argued over since 1980. <laughs> Proud supporter of independent thought, whether that's online, over the air, or in a bottle. More at SierraNevada.com. From NPR and WBEZ Chicago, this is Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, the NPR News Quiz. I'm Bill Curtis. We're playing this week with Roy Blunt Jr., Roxanne Roxanne Roberts, Roberts, and Peter Gross. Gross. And here we go. Here's your host, host, the Palace 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 Theater Theater in Columbus, Columbus, Ohio, Ohio, Peter Segal. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, everybody. Right now, Wait, 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 you're in public, public relations. relations. Uh, are, are you, you talking about like, like crisis public, public relations, relations to make sure people, people seem not so bad? bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm the anti public, public relations, relations. yes. yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was just experimenting. <laughs> well, welcome to the show, Sean. You're going to play the game in which you have to tell truth from fiction. Bill, what is Sean's topic? Well, the topic is youthful indiscretion. We all make mistakes when we were young, and that's how we ended up with tattoos and bad credit and Don Jr. <laughs> but this week we heard a story of someone finally coming to terms with a mistake from long ago. Our panelists are going to tell you about it. Pick the one who's telling the truth. You'll win the voice on your voicemail. Are you ready to play? Absolutely. Thank right. you. First, let's hear from Roy Blunt. This week, Nick Birchall of Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, sent a plea for forgiveness to the stately Fairmont Express Hotel in coastal Victoria, British Columbia. Seventeen years ago, Birchall said he was young and immature, and therefore he didn't think about what could go wrong with seagulls and pepperoni. <laughs> there was no fridge in his room at the Victoria, so to keep his pepperoni cool, he left an open suitcase full of fresh pepperoni sausages next to an open window. When he returned from a walk on the beach, young Birchall found 30 to 40 seagulls gorging on the redolent sausages. Startled, the birds exploded into a torpedo of excrement, feathers, and chunks of pepperoni. The damage was so great that Birchall was banned from the Empress forever. But after all these years, the hotel, amused by his story, welcomed him back. You might want to not take another one of those walks on the beach, though. Seagulls may live longer 
than 17 years. <laughs> and they remember things. Oh, oh! <laughs> that guy can throw a party! <laughs> a man apologizes for wrecking a hotel room 17 years ago by leaving out a pepperoni near an open window where the seagulls could get to it. <laughs> Your next story of someone finally putting the past behind them comes from Roxanne Roberts. We all know Bill Gates is the billionaire philanthropist of Microsoft, but none of us knew until last week that a partnership with Steve Jobs was ruined because Gates appeared in an ABBA tribute show. In an interview with Wired magazine about the early years of the company, Gates, now 62, revealed that he and Jobs were in talks to merge their two companies in 1978, and he invited the Apple founder to Microsoft's Christmas party that year. As a joke for employees, Gates, co-founder Paul Allen, and two other colleagues donned sequin pantsuits and wigs and belted out the hits of the Swedish supergroup. Quote, Paul sang Waterloo, but I stole the show with Take a Chance on Me, said Gates. But Jobs was horrified by the performance and told the then 23-year-old Gates that no one would ever, ever take him or Microsoft seriously. <laughs> Quote, so for years I swore everyone to secrecy and hid all the photos from the party, said Gates. Now he's making it up to ABBA. He's apologized and invited the real singers to perform at this year's Microsoft Christmas party. <laughs> the great merging of tech titans was aborted because Bill Gates played in an ABBA tribute band. Your last story of someone indiscreeting youthfully comes from Peter Gross. Back in 1993, 12-year-old Stevie Cooper was at his best friend Todd Aaron's house playing the Nintendo game Mario Kart when Todd paused the game to use the bathroom. After he left the room, a mischievous Stevie unpaused the game, sending Todd's Luigi careening into a ditch as Stevie guided his Mario to victory. 